Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every time by Aura Ring. I speak about it all the time. I, I love I love it. I love this technology. I love what it does for me, all, all my homies. Uh, we, As you all know, we compete just about in everything we do. Uh, sleep and recovery is no different, and the Aura Ring is, is the best, uh, whether you're tracking heart rate variability, heart rate, core temperature activity, obviously, all the uh, metrics of sleep, um, it's my go-to. And so, uh, by the way, I had an amazing night of sleep last night. I'm going to get into another part of that. Don't, don't just get your minds out of the gutter. I'm going to get into that in a second. Uh, head on over to Aura Ring, O-U-R-A, AuraRing.com and find out more. Uh, I'm joined as we talk about what was supposed to be a week sort of uh, a week one recap of the, the Tour of Italy, a.k.a. the Giro, until George had a lot of things come up. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to fit this into his schedule. But sort of a week one recap, we can also talk about today's exciting stage. Uh, George is over reveling in uh, in the Carolinas with his big victory on the uh, We Do Strava segment challenge. Uh, also got JB over there in Austin and the other JB in Madrid. And just so you all know, I, I was in Utah yesterday sort of consoling. I had to fly over there and console my people. You know, George rallied his troops, <laughs> full credit. We were well ahead. Powder Mountain outside of Ogden was well ahead. And, um, you know, George, everybody likes him. Everybody listens and they rallied. And, and, and instead, we're headed to uh, Brevard, North Carolina, uh, to Pilot Mountain. So, George, congratulations. And to my peeps who I was with in Utah yesterday, I am so sorry. I know should, we, been... should, we, should we have a recount of the votes to check if, <laughs> if, the, if the voting was, you know, was, was, it, was it legal? Legal that, votes. That's Amer the American way. Let's call voter mm. fraud. Start over. <laughs> well, I definitely yeah, I, want to thank everybody for going on the We Do website and voting for the Carolinas. You know, I put a lot of effort into that. Uh, Lance and uh, a couple of members of our team called me up, what, Friday and said, we're over 500 boats behind. That Powder Mountain was up ahead. And, you know, Lance, of course, is traveling all over the place. And I'm sorry, I got a bunch of travel coming up as well. So for me to fly to Utah next week would have been a bit of a stretch. And I'm happy that uh, <laughs> I get to just drive to the segment and uh, have a fun, fun time videoing it with Lance. Mm. The good news, I've been to Brevard. That's a, boy, that's a gorgeous town. Oh, well, that is good news. Yeah, you're going to have a good time there. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, hey, before we jump into the Giro stuff, today's show also brought to you by Helix. Now, this is the, what I was alluding to on the sleep. I, I, frankly, I've never slept better. And George just touched on it. We, we, both of us uh, are on the road a ton. I love coming home and sleeping on this Helix mattress. Uh, the process is this. So you go on, you take a two-minute quiz, you sort of um, uh, talk about your sleep and your sleep characteristics and, and <laughs> however many other people you have in the bed with you. Get your minds out of the gutter. I got five kids and dogs and, you know, so, um, but this Helix mattress has been a game changer for me. It's won um, uh, reviews all over the place, uh, whether it's a GQ, Wired Magazine, Best Mattress. Um, head on over to helixsleep.com slash the move, by the way, 10 year warranty. Uh, so in, the, in one last thing here, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. I don't know that I got the pillows guys. I want a pillow for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash the move. One more time. That's helixsleep.com slash the move. I mean, combine those two, you get that epic night of sleep. You wake up in the morning with aura. You see just exactly how great it was. Bam. Um, also today's show brought to you by magic spoon. This is one that, uh, for our family is, is a go-to, uh, as parents who are concerned about what their kids put in their mouths and not to mention uh, that, but what we put in our mouths, th this is, this is sort of a uh, cereal for the 21st century. So no crap, no artificial ingredients, no, uh, stevia, no, no sugar, no gluten, no grain, a uh, bunch of protein, all the great tastes. So you're giving up all these things that, that are better for you and you're not sacrificing taste, 
uh, head on over to Magic Spoon. They also got a new a new flavor out, the birthday cake flavor, um, which my better half has a birthday coming up. So I got her a bunch of boxes of the birthday cake flavor. Head on over to magicspoon.com slash the move. Get five bucks off with the code the move at checkout. Magicspoon.com slash the move. So it's been and 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 full disclosure, you guys follow this a lot closer than me, but this has been an exciting, lots of stuff to talk about in week one. Yeah, we'll start off with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Johan and I've already had a, a little bit of time to talk about it, but the amazing performance of Filippo Ghana was just unreal, mm -hmm. unreal, the power that guy puts out. I don't know by if you guys way, got by, to watch that. In terms of average speed, everybody, I mean, he obviously was, was uh, next level, but everybody is going fast. These average speeds, you look at this. Yeah, you're 55 kilometers an hour and you're like place 40, <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. You know, I mean, 55 normally you would always win any time trial. Um, but Ghana was, I think it was you know, just, just extraordinary. You know, the, the, the best times were already 57, 50, 57 and a half. And then all of a sudden he gets, he comes and does 10 seconds faster. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, he's arguably the best in the world, you know, I mean, it's like he's, he has the world record over four kilometers on the track, which is four zero one, mm. uh, standing for those, still. for those at home. That's at a stay yeah, dead stop. <laughs> at average yeah. speed is 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, that's almost 37 miles an hour. That is. Yeah. That's crazy. What a yeah. beast. Yeah, yeah his, well, sure. his average power um, power output is just mind boggling. I mean, mm -hmm. the numbers he's putting up is something that we really, even with guys like Cancelaro, we haven't seen num numbers like that. What do you no, guys I, think I, that? What do you think this is? Is it uh, is a combination of equipment and different types of training? Are they spending more time on the TT bike? What are these guys doing differently? I mean, in in Ghana's in Ghana's case, of course, it's a super talent, huge power. And attention to detail, everything's until the last detail fine tuned. Um, and, you know, guys like that set the standard, you know, I mean, nowadays teams have a whole team of experts to that are so solely dedicated to getting faster. Um, you know, back in the days we had a few people, but, you know, we, they came in and out nowadays uh, teams have a uh, fixed staff that takes care of that. And it's no, I mean, it's no coincidence that all of them go so fast. And it's a, it's a, it's a big, it's a big, uh, difference in position as well from the road bike. So a lot of guys, even though they might have that power on the road bike, they aren't able mm -hmm. to produce that power on a time trial bike. And clearly Ghana spends a lot of time training in that position and it has no effect on his power output. <laughs> no, he's incredible. He's just the uh, next, next level, you know? I mean, and, the, and, and and then have a have a guy like that on the team. You know, once he gets the pink jersey, does a few days, and then starts to work. I mean, imagine you know that's that's like being in a sofa all day as a leader behind a guy like that. Well, you saw him today. I mean, you get on these mm -hmm. tough tough roads. Um, f f forget the roads. Have, let's talk about the fight for position just to get there in the front. But then you do get on these gravel roads, which we're going to talk about because I. Uh, I, I'm interested to get just an overall take and I'm interested to hear from the audience. What, uh, if you're, if you're watching or paying attention, as we know, gravel is sort of all the rage, uh, in cycling and then to then drop these into the grand tours, uh, fun to watch. So, um, but then this guy gets to the front. I mean, you might imagine if you're like guy number 40 and you see him just move to the front you're like, Oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. But a bunch but, of other, uh, not not a bit, but but you know, several things stand out. Johan, one of your uh, pre-race favorites for at least the podium, Mikael Landa out of the race. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Joe Dombrowski an American stage win. Um, Bernal just looks exceptional. Um, Caleb Ewan, which we got to talk about, who was uh, also looked great, but then uh, abandoned, um, mm -hmm. which uh, had its own little bit of controversy that we can get into, but. Uh, a lot of highlights in in the sort of the first half of this Giro. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, with the second from the second stage on, when you see Tim Malia winning the sprint, sprint with a very exciting sprint where Gavaria might have had a chance to go around him, but got taken into the barriers by his own teammate. Um, so it was already it started off with a bit of drama there on the first stage. No, but uh, I think I think you know uh, in, in when we talk about Caleb Ewan, right? Uh, I think he is 
for the moment, probably the fastest sprinter, pure, if you look at pure power, sprint power, um, I think there's nobody going to argue with that. Uh, one, two stages and, and then um, went home. Obviously, I think his initial plan was to make it to the rest day. Uh, there, was, there was still one stage that he could potentially win, uh, which was won by Peter Sagan in the end. Um, but I, uh, I completely understand his decision of, uh, of, ab of, of abandoning the Giro. I mean, he made it clear before the season that he, uh, he wants to race all three Grand Tours. So he does Giro, Tour and Vuelta and wants to win stages in all three. You know, after winning two stages uh, after seven or eight days, I think, you know, it's a smart decision to, to just say, okay, you know, now I focus on the Tour de France. Um, you know, I think times have changed. You know, I've seen comments uh, of, you know, my, my countryman, the great Eddie Merckx, uh, who criticized Caleb Ewan and saying, you know, it showed no respect to the Giro. I, I, I don't agree with that. You know, back in the days, maybe when, you know, Eddie raced everything, you know, he won five Giros, he won five tours. Um, but these things have changed. And obviously this is in, you know, uh, in agreement with his team. It's what his team wants. So um, I, I think it's understandable that he, uh, he made a suitcase and went home. I agree, Johan. This guy's paid to win races, not to finish Grand Tours. And mm -hmm. he set his, his goals clearly on in the beginning of the season. And he's, he's accomplishing them now. Also, secondly, apparently... Uh, the rumor is he wanted to be there for the Monaco GP, which he's got a nice place there on the on the on the start <laughs> near the start line. So that, I'm sure that'd be a fun. Now wait, now wait, hang on yeah. a second. Hey, <laughs> where are you reading this shit? Or this is these your? People? It's a kind of a joke, but we did hear we did hear that. <laughs> this is but, so but main point is he's he's paid to win races. He won two stages. Not I mean won two stages very impressively. The second stage that he won, he had to bridge a huge gap, so he was kind of left there on his own. Um, and still come around Gaviria. I mean, the guy is on incredible form. Knee may or not have been hurting, but he'll, I'm sure he'll be back there winning in the stages in the Tour de France as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll add to this that just by reading a lot of the comments and questions that we got in, uh, including this one from Remy, it's like, I understand the, the, the business of the sport, but I find it somewhat not in line with sportsmanship. So a lot of people, fans, um, when someone comes in, takes some sprints and abandons, feel like it it's disrespecting it in some way i i, I think it, look you got to look at it in its uh in its totality you have okay we all know when we've all lived through this sort of peanut gallery um but if you're the if you're the title sponsor of the team and you got a guy who can win stages in all three of the grand tours you're going to take 24 hours of whether it's merck saying something or or comments on the internet it, it's it's they don't care. They just don't care. So, and, and I, I don't, I don't know that I disagree with that. If you have, if you can back it up and when, if he, believe me, he going to win a stage in the tour of France, nobody's going to remember this. So. <laughs> and yeah. for the, for the other sprinters for two weeks now, they're like, okay, Caleb's gone. <laughs> right. It's not, not a bad deal for them to pick up a win. Yeah. And I'm, and what I'm really disturbed about is George is actually Colombian and he's still not pronouncing Gaviria, right? <laughs> Gaviria, we, we, Gaviria, we've been, Gaviria, yeah. Gaviria, we were reprimanded endlessly for us. We were Gaviria. We had all these pronunciations <laughs> of this guy's name. It's George, it's Gaviria. Well, you guys all pronounce my name the wrong way. So I, might as, I just kept with the theme. In, incapié. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I've, 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 I'm, I must have been mistaken. I've changed your name. It's now Diva. <laughs> yeah, he's had that. I had that name for a while. You know. Anyway, back to the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the big, the big, the big thing for you guys to comment on is, uh, you know, Johan went out on a limb picking um, Remco Evenpool as a pre-race favorite. You guys were like, "What? The guy hasn't raced in over a year." And he was looking good until today. So the big story mm -hmm. is that. And then Bernal coming into this race in question with his, uh, uh, his, his back issues, he has certainly proven that is not a problem. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, JB, I think we need to also touch upon what an awesome win that was by Taco Van Horn making the breakaway. Apparently, he didn't even have a contract in December. Johan, is that correct? True, Got a true. last yeah. last minute con contract and ends up winning. A, you know, very difficult stage. Wrote an incredible stage. Of course, a lot of people, you know, say the guy that wins in the breakaway is sometimes lucky. This guy 
had the power to ride it to the end. We had Valerio in the director's car who I was, um, you know, wrote for him as well. It was just a very exciting stage to see a small team, the underdog, underdog, so to speak, to win a stage like that, a very hard stage. Mm -hmm. And of course, the next stage, you've got the American with Joe Dombrowski. Hadn't won a, a, uh, I think he hadn't won a pro tour race since he turned pro. And we all know he came out of Axel's program, you know, with five stars coming out of there and had a few rough years, but to see him win a very difficult stage as well was awesome. And by, and by the way, a past winner of the baby Giro. Yep. Uh, which yeah. is nine, is, nine years, amazing. nine years after his winning the baby Giro, he, he won his first race outside of the United States. So, hmm. You know, and there you also see how fragile cycling is. You know, he's he's on top of the world and then 24 hours later goes down together with Landa and has to leave the Giro, which was really sad to see. Well, let's hope there's a silver lining to that. Not only did he win the stage, but he was had no chance of going to the Tour de France. Perhaps maybe now him and McNulty will be riding for Pogacar at the Tour de France, which would be exciting for us Americans to watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I still want to, I want to go back to this Remco of Annapol situation because I'm, yes, he suffered today and, and uh, this may be the start of, of the beginning of the end for him uh, at this Tour of Italy, but to, to, I still can't get my head around having not raced since the Tour of Lombardia, a race that we covered here, awful crash, uh, as you watch it on uh, television, just one of those ones where you're not sure that, that, uh, that the ending's good, uh, but to, to, to just never have pinned on a number until the tour of Italy. Mm. <laughs> you know what? That, that's, that, that is amazing. That's impressive. And, but at the same time, I guess um, it would be no surprise that the racing would start to wear on you. You just can't replicate this intensity and in training uh, that I'm aware of and um, start to show today, but still young kid, no races jump right in. Poof, at, I think, yeah. I think not, only, not only no, not only no races, uh, Lance. You know, coming back from that injury, you know, that's 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 another another load of stress on your body. And um, you know, I think I think probably you know today reality has caught up with him. You know, and, and uh, you know, we would say I would I would say you know, finally, we are in real cycling. You know, the, the what what everybody thinks would happen has happened, and and. You know, otherwise it would be kind of a miracle. And, you know, we see these young guys do amazing things, um, but it's only logical what happened, I think, today. You know, okay, 10 okay. days. Well, time out. Just, yeah. just time out for a second, because you're the one who picked him to win. And I just assumed that you had yeah. some, some yeah, yeah, yeah. sneaky Belgian intel. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, I, <laughs> how, how, how is that your pick then? Uh, Oh, well, I mean, it was my pick because, you know, I had information from the team that he was on amazing form, that his training rides were really good. And, you know, it was, I said, it was a really bold, bold bet. Uh, if you, if you look back or you, if you listen back to uh, our serious podcast where the real experts P- P- talk <laughs> JB squared, I said, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, Bernal always wins this Giro. A, a good Bernal. It doesn't need to be a super Bernal. Now I had other, other information that he was really struggling with his with his back, and the, the the information was really alarming, which turned out not to be true. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you can hope. I mean, you, we see things in cycling nowadays that we say, "What?" You know, look at uh, uh, Matthew van der Poel and Tom Pitcock. They leave road cycling, they go into mountain biking against the best in the world. And all of a sudden they're the two guys who are dominating. So there, this, these are times where the logical historical theories are destroyed. And so my thinking was, you know, this is another one, you know, um, he, he's going to, he's going to do it. But if you look at it real realistically, then what happened today was after 10 days of racing on top of that, after a rest day and probably being caught up a little bit too much in this rivalry uh, at some point it was like it was only bernal and even yeah, I mean, right what, what do you think about them r- racing full gas for these bonus sprints the first yeah. week, week of the giro with such a hard last week of the, of the race to come to me it just seems like even for it's, even for bernal it's it's too much for a second here is two seconds there it's too much it's, rid- it's ridiculous it's ridiculous yeah. i think they both got caught up in this e- uh, war of egos right it's like they want to show who's the strongest for one second 
You know, I actually, I, I, I contacted his, uh, Evenepoel's team and I said, you know, these are mistakes you cannot make. You know, I mean, it's, it's whenever you do a, a big, a big effort uh, like that, it needs to be rewarding. And it's, it's too much of an effort for one second. That's just, you can't do that uh, at, the, at, the, at the big tour. Hmm. Let's keep getting into it, but first, a uh, little bit of business. Today's show also brought to you by Roca. What a company what, and what a, what a group of badass athletes constantly pushing themselves uh, physically. I, I, I love just following them on, on uh, Instagram and just seeing the level of intensity around this company and the people that work there. Uh, but they bring that into what they do in the business. Uh, they design the best eyewear, the best lenses out there. They are my go-tos uh, uh, primarily on the reader front. Uh, but, but as, as it starts to thaw out here in Aspen and I'm back on the bike, um, the, the, this lens and this shade is the, is the best that I've worn. Um, the new matador looking amazing. You're probably seeing them out there in the Peloton. Uh, our listeners get 20% off your first purchase. Head on over to Roka, R O K A dot com and enter the move at checkout 20% off your first purchase. Last one of the day. Also today's show also brought to you by Juve. It's another one I love playing around with. Uh, my red light therapy unit downstairs. Um, it, it, it's, uh, you know what I, you know, what I love about it is, is it, it's almost too good to be true. Right. And you think this can't be this, does this work? Well, in fact, there's hundreds of peer reviewed research papers out there that show that it absolutely works, uh, produce more energy, recover faster, perform better, lower inflammation, which we all need, uh, enhance your sleep, healthy skin, and increased circulation. Hey, as the great Jay-Z said, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. So uh, the Juve is the unit and they've got all kinds of options. Mine's, mine's built into the house here, but I also have my travel unit that I love. Head on over to Juve and that's dot com slash the move. The discount code is the move. 50 bucks off your first purchase of a Gen 2 I'm sorry, Gen 3.0 device or a Juve Go 2.0. Um, and in case you're wondering, George, yes, I know, I know you've been dying for it. I, I will post up some new uh, ass crack shots pretty soon. Um, Juve.com slash the move. So, uh, Johan, because um, the GC is still tight. I, I see it as tight. Uh, and, and if if your intel on the front end was that that Bernal's back isn't great, well, you, you, I don't. You, you, you might have been getting bad intel. Well, I mean, the, the intel came from almost from the source, but I think it was uh, it was just you know playing down his chances, and uh, you know somebody who has back problems is not at this level. Um, you know, no, but all his, this his numbers, Johan, are insane. I mean, somebody said on stage nine, he posted some of his Stra Strava stats, and uh, mm -hmm. he did for the last three minutes and thirty seconds, he averaged four hundred forty watts. The last forty nine seconds, he averaged five hundred forty watts, which is five hundred forty watts, which is just ten watts per kilo. So the it, amount which, of power geez, that was this on is the on, gravel. This is on stage nine. This on is the gravel, 3, 000, right? On the gravel, three thousand meters of climbing, averaged two hundred forty watts for the for the whole day. But the last 50 seconds at 10 watts per kilo after such a hard stage is, mm -hmm. is, is insane. I say it all the time. I'm going to say it again, man. I am glad I'm out of this sport. <laughs> We'd be in the groupetto. Yeah. <laughs> not only that, we're not, we'd, we'd never be home. These guys go from race to, to altitude camp. Um, so they're, they're just, they're never ending, never stopping. Yeah, no, but I think, you know, I mean, the, the, where we saw the real power that we had, we had two uphill finishes until now, which really mattered. Uh, and both of them were dominated by Bernal. Um, and, uh, and especially, especially the one on the gravel section on the ski slope. Um, I think, you know, for the moment, uh, he's by far, he's, he's showing that he's the strongest Ineos as a team is incredible, incredible. I mean, if you looked at, at today, oh, just, just today's stage, I mean, what they did today was they basically decided what was going to happen. They raced from the front, you know, first gravel section, they went in there. I don't know if, it, if they had any information that Remco was not feeling good or not, but obviously, you know, when Ghana went to the front, Bernal was on his wheel, felt, looked really comfortable. I mean, let's not forget, you know, Bernal is an ex-mountain bike rider. 
Mm. Uh, this is this is his natural environment, and um, and so you know for the moment I, I think Bernal is uh, is the the guy to beat. You know, uh, it was really it was one one little thing that that, that was really remarkable was when he uh, won that stage and took the jersey. Uh, he said, you know, I said hmm, that's that's a weird that's weird. He said it's my first win, my first stage win in a, in a Grand Tour. That was his first stage win in a Grand Tour. I mean, we all look at Bernal as an established value in the Grand Tours, but yet he never had won a stage. Wow, that is interesting. That, yeah, yeah, it'd be inter- I'd be interesting to see what uh, Remco says today after the stage. I'm wondering if it was a, a fueling strategy that went off, but he did, was definitely off on today's stage. And and uh, like you said, Johan, Ineos took advantage of it. And let's not forget, they're missing their number two guy, Sivikov, who mm-hmm. crashed out on mm-hmm. on stage six. So. In fact, it's not really harming them at all. But imagine if he was still in the race. Did you guys yeah, make? Did, did you make anything of that moment where we saw Remco take his earpiece out in frustration and some communication with the car? You know, this is new terrain for him. Also, I mean, let's not forget this guy. Since he started racing, he's been winning. He's been off the front by himself, dominating everything. Came to the pro- the professionals first year, immediately won San Sebastian. And since then, you know, last year won all of the races he participated in, all of them. And this is the so this is a new experience for him, you know, like being on on the back and and having to struggle, having to have a teammate wait for him. You know, I, c- I cannot imagine what goes through his head, but this is a reality check, of course, which which I think is necessary in his development and his progress. Um, but yeah, he must be super disappointed and super frustrated. Yeah, we'll see how he reacts from that. I mean, it was mm-hmm. obviously a, a very bad stage for him. It wasn't a complete disaster. He's still in top 10 overall. I think he's sitting seventh overall. Um, so he could still claw his way back. What we we do need to point out, you know, how, how hard these guys are, are sprinting for the bonus sprints, which Johan and I agreed was kind of is, is kind of crazy. But you got guys that are established, you know, GC riders like Simon Yates. He, he hasn't even hit the wind. I mean, and he's still sitting pretty and I think in just over a minute behind the overall and and knows how difficult that last week can be. I, I don't think this race is over by any means. Sure, no, Bernal's, no. you know, got a big advantage and, and the strongest right now, but we, this race has got a, a lot of drama left in it. As usual, as usual. In the last week, the Giro can turn around and... But you know, today, if you look at that stage today, man, they, this, this was war. You know, they came, they they all came in dead. I mean, let's not forget, this is the day after a rest day. Yeah, yeah, it's rare when you see guys like uh, Nibali just not even really showing <laughs> showing a big effort. Just sit up and just I can't mm-hmm. do this anymore. Uh, these mm-hmm. guys were just coming apart there at the end, and it was really a race of attrition today for. You know, being a stage in the zero, 10 stage, 11 stage of the zero, these guys were coming in one by one, which is, you know, very rare for a non, you know, standard mountain stage. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say on the on the JB show that uh, Johan sees things that uh, the rest of us don't always see, you know, in rider's condition form. And on the heels of you saying, you know, Bernal may be wasting some energy. Who in the GC do you think could do? And again, like George said, could be waiting to pounce Simon Yates is it obviously Simon, obviously Simon Yates Simon Yates you know there's he we haven't seen him he, I think he he lost a bit a bit of time where he shouldn't have because there were some some uphill finishes where normally he's really good at but still you know I mean he has a bad experience in the Giro was flying the first two weeks a couple of years ago and then you know completely broke down in the in the last week and um you know, it's it's far from over. Uh, Vlasov yeah. looks really good too. You know, obviously, those days, some- you, you, Johan. Those days that Simon kind of lost some time it was also super cold, very mm-hmm. technical. So there's there's other you know issues that could have been going on then. But like you said, he went from dominating a zero for two weeks to cracking to perhaps maybe now doing the opposite, which would be very, mm-hmm. really interesting to see if he's hiding, saving energy, and see how good he is in the third week. Yeah, yeah, he's he's listen for the moment. He's 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 climbed up. He's uh he's in fifth now, I guess. Um, but listen, let's uh, let's also talk a little bit about Peter Sagan. Um, I agree. You know, um, Sagan, the way he picks the stages that he that the, the sprinters can get dropped, the way he gets his team around him, and the way he puts the herd on the peloton with his team is incredible. And then to finish it off like he did. 
in uh, when he won the stage sprinting against Gaviria, who was in an ideal position. I think that's just, you know, top class. Yeah. Wow. Sagan is definitely back recovered from his COVID issue. And mm -hmm. um, like you said, just real, just real planned way of winning races. He's not, he's not just dominating like he used to, but he's really using all of the assets of his team and really and picking the stages that he wants to go for and, and putting it all in. Yeah. Well, when you get, yeah. yeah, when you get up there, you know, he's been around now for decade yeah. plus. You, you, yeah. You, you figure it out. You got to be smart, pick your, pick your spots. Um, not, not just in, in, as far as I watch it, I mean, just the, obviously, uh, getting COVID recovering from that, you know, telling what just, uh, the team drama, I haven't caught up on the latest, maybe there's more to that, but you know, it's, it's, that's an awkward position to be in when you got a GM or a team owner or a boss that sort of questioning whether or not uh, you're worth it. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and get, that can go either way. So, uh, but he's a tough dude and he likes to win. Right. So it's one thing to, ah, I got to win. I'm paid to win. But if you just like it because it's, <laughs> it's just in your DNA, then that's Peter Sagan. Yeah. And also this, you know, he, he obviously gets highly motivated by this points classification in grand tours, you know, has the Mali, Maria Chiclamina now. And, uh, um, I think we're going to, you know, let's, let's see if the GM of Bora still set, has the same speech after the Tour de France, you know, I, I think Sagan will go to the tour again with the intention to, to win the green. Um, and so there are talks that, you know, he, uh, he's, le he's leaving Bora and that uh, basically the only team he could potentially go to would be the Koenig Quickstep, mm -hmm. which, will be, which will not be the Koenig Quickstep next year, by the way, because the Koenig just announced today, I guess, or yesterday that they're terminating their sponsorship. Ah, uh, we oh. just learned how to pronounce it right. Mm -hmm. too. Huh. The Koenig, yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, the good news for them is that Quickstep has decided to sponsor for six more years. Jesus. Which, I mean, Patrick, Patrick LeFevre is going to be in a nursing home and he's still going to have like a 20 year <laughs> title sponsor. He's going to be there. And like, he won't even remember that he had a cycling team. I mean, did, uh, but by the way, uh, that's yeah, yeah. quick step, man. Been around you know, you know, did they announce that they're sponsoring as a title for six more years or they're staying? No, in no, 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 no. I don't, I don't know exactly what the deal is there because the, the, basically the owner, the owner of the team is uh, a guy from Czech Republic, Zdenek uh, mm -hmm. Bakala. Who's got a place and, in Hilton Head, by the way, South Carolina, apparently. Allegedly. Okay. Well, you okay. stopped. You know what? You, you don't get to. You're, you're, we're done talking about the Carolinas, <laughs> okay? This is a very sensitive subject. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, you know, I think uh, they're, still, they're still looking for a sponsor. And uh, I don't know exactly how they're going to how, how finance the team. Uh, but obviously specialized is a big deal, a big, a big part of it. And, uh, and so I read, uh, Lefebvre, Patrick Lefebvre is looking, he's obviously, he's talking to the manager of, of Peter Sagan. Um, and, uh, the problem he has is that Sagan comes with a whole entourage, you know, comes with two riders, uh, a, a mechanic, uh, a soigneur, um, a chiropractor, press agent, and the, the, the price ticket for the whole thing is guess how much it's gotta million, be what, eight million yeah, dollars eight eight to ten eight wow. yeah. eight, eight million wow. so uh patrick said that there's no way he can he, he's gonna pay that or can pay that so it's gonna depend on specialized i guess wow mm -hmm. mm. wow huh but, okay but I, I am i am sure though that if sagan makes the move to that team Get he's, ready. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna be on a very high level. And that's you know, for it's, sure. It's it's a team that wins, 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 and it's in there. That's really in their DNA, the winning, you know. And um, I would like to see him there. I mean, obviously, there's other other Almeida leaves the team, Sam Bennett leaves the team. Um, so yeah, a guy like uh like Sagan could uh could really fit in there. Yeah. Let's talk about the back half of this Giro because I I and somebody handed me a it's the Peloton magazine's Giro guide. And you see, I mean, the back half of this in terms of, and they've uh, like a little like they do in Roubaix where they rank the sections, they've ranked the stages by stars. I mean, there's just a whole shit ton of stars in the back mm. half of this thing. Um, 
And of course, as we know, the, the Tour of Italy can always throw some weather at you uh, in the final week. So uh, this looks, uh, this is going to be a, a fun one to watch. It's going to hurt. Oh, the last week is, is, is brutal. You know, I mean, I think if you take all the stars together of the whole, of the whole Giro, I think we've done, we're, we're past halfway now. We had only one third of the stars, two thirds of the stars are still to come. Wow. Um, which, you know, which, which makes it always very interesting. You know, one, one stage can basically turn around the whole, the whole Giro. And, you know, we have the Zoncolan, you know, the Zoncolan is something which is, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's unique. You know, there's the last kilometer has parts in it of, you know, 23, 24%. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, for the moment, I have to say, you know, uh, Bernal looks like the real favorite. Ineos is, is riding really, really well. Um, it means also that they have to control everything. Uh, the more Bernal manifests himself as the dominator, we all know what that means. And you have to, you know, control the whole, uh, the whole situation today. There was a little bit of help from other guys who could basically get some, some time on, on Remco Evenepoel, but that's not going to stay the case. And, um, so we'll see. We'll see. It's it's still a long way to go to Milan. And speaking of control, you have, you, you have 10, the top 10 on GC are separated by just over three minutes. Mm-hmm. That's, not, that's, if you're trying to control, that's a lot. Of, there starts to be a lot of guys to watch. And three, it's minutes, not, it's, three minutes it's, with all these stages, that's. Yeah, it's not a lot at all. And it's not, it's no. also not very common to see, you know, a guy like Bernal being the favorite of the tour dig so deep in already two or three stages where he went all in and burned a lot of matches and, you know, of course, the guy is, has history of winning a Grand Tour and can do it, but it's also he's spent he's burning a lot more matches than we would typically see from a Grand Tour favorite. Well, I think I think he's really anxious also to 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 demonstrate that he's back. You know, he he comes off a di- really difficult period. You now won the Tour, then last year had uh, he had to abandon the Tour, had lots of issues uh, with his with his body, with his back, with his muscles. So obviously, you know, the, we, and we could see how emotional he was. And you would say, okay, you know, he just took the, the pink jersey, won a stage in the Giro, but you know, the guy won the tour already. So what's the big deal? But I think the emotion that he was, you know, showing was that yes, he was finally back after such a difficult time. And so it might be that he's a bit a bit too hungry and a bit too uh, generous with his efforts. Um, you know, of, of course, you know, he's Colombian. Normally, he his preferred terrain still comes, uh, you know, in the high mountains. So, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Yep. We shall see JB. I think you got some, uh, I think you got some notes from, from, uh, from, do. Yeah, from yeah, our we're, peeps. We're getting a lot of questions and comments, but first I, I wanted to tackle this one. Uh, this comes from Graham. He says, my mom was recently diagnosed with endometrial cancer. She just had surgery. We will find out the full extent of her condition in about a week once the pathology report comes back. You think Lance could say hi and cheer her on? She loves Lance, and I know it would lift her spirits. (laughs) Her name is JC. So I'll pull this clip if you want to give her a few words. And Well, JC, yeah, absolutely. We're, you know, all of us here at The Move are thinking about you, pulling for you. Uh, I've certainly been there personally. Uh, Most of us uh, here have been through it. Um, with loved ones. So, uh, not the easiest time, uh, but just know that, uh, that you're loved and you're thought of. And, uh, if we can ever do anything to help, uh, let us know. Um, if your initials are any, uh, uh, indication, you got some superpowers there. So, uh, lean on those and, uh, keep us posted JC strong. All right, Graham, we're going to send that over to your mom or I will later today. Uh, Here's a fun question and we'll wrap up on this. If you guys had not become professional cyclists, what would you have done? Oh boy. (laughs) And and what would make it even funner is if we didn't answer for ourselves, but instead, you know, I sort of answered, I would like to be for George. Okay. Let's Uh, do that. uh, Yeah. (laughs) I'll go first. Okay. Who are you, who are you answering for? I'm going to ask for you, Lance. I think you would have been a WWF wrestler. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? You you are such a dumbass. It's not even WWF. That's the World Wildlife Fund. It's now they had to change the name. It's WWE. Okay, whatever. You got it, though. (laughs) And I, you know what? I, I, I didn't expect that, but I like it. I'm man. I grew up watching wrestling. 
Uh, in Dallas, we had a, a kind of a janky thing, you know, Friday night wrestling. They had everybody, man, the Vaughn Ericks, uh, nature board, Ric Flair, uh, Kabuki, uh, Andre, the giant, um, God, I could go on and on. And now it's become, you know, this huge entertainment platform. Uh, but I, 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 I can dig that. In, in fact, there's parts of me that has been like, well, wow, maybe I could still do that. At least be like the manager. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'll speak for George. So I think, and uh, no, you threw me off George. Damn it. Uh, you, <laughs> y'all go first. I want to think more about what I think George would have been. George, what do you think Johan would be doing? And just got an update from, uh, Mark Higgins that apparently Lance has been invited to a wrestling, a WWE match. So you still have a shot, Lance. It's not over. <laughs> Let me tell you something going off the top turnbuckle with this back of mine. You y'all, I wouldn't even be able to sit for this podcast. I can't. Um, those days are done. All right, what's what was Johan going to be, George? Wait, I I I got one. That's all I had. I got. Well, JB else. said, oh, okay, Johan. then JB, you you JB, JB you, 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 what you do I think you, Johan would do? Oh mm-hmm. my god, Johan can do anything because he he's 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 logical. He does his research. Speaks uh, five languages. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he would have gone into politics. <laughs> Yeah, I think he'd have been a good politician. Yeah, you, I you like see, that. I don't, I don't think so. No, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not diplomatic enough for that. I, but you would be good at it because mm-hmm. I, I think, I think you are diplomatic. I think, you, yeah, sneaky, yeah. sneaky diplomatic. I, th- I think you weigh both sides of the fence always and 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 make a logical decision. I yeah, know. I, I would have, I would have been in marketing. Obviously, I, I, I have a degree in marketing, so uh, I would probably have been in that industry. I think George would have made a hell of a televangelist. <laughs> I mean, this, what's this guy? What's this guy? What's this one guy that's in, in the damn ads? Come on and bike this. Joel Steen would have nothing. I mean, George stand up there with that scruff. No, I think I, I think I have, uh, you know, I have the family on by his side. He does have nice wavy preacher hair. There's another guy. There's like another, he's, he's from the okay. South, you know, now right. and, you know, I know. Uh, yeah. He'd been, uh, you know, doing baptisms in his like, you know, in his hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe more like Kenneth Copeland. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Look him up. Either. <laughs> Look him up. Look him up. Okay. What would, what would, what would JB Hager have okay, been? Okay, Lord. I don't think that question was for me. If you weren't a professional cyclist. I think JB, I, I think JB ended up exactly what, what, what he was meant to do. And he's a professional uh, boat driver for his badass daughter. <laughs> and that's, he has, he's living the dream. That is, that's a good gig. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back uh, soon with another update from, uh, from this tour of Italy, which is, you know, shaping up to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And tune in to also, Tune into our other shows, Johan. Why don't you give us show some love to those shows? You got you got La yeah, we, So we have we have JB Squared, which yep. we do midweek. JB, when we're going to do that to, uh, on Thursday, probably Thursday. Uh, yeah, I, I know we've got we we're so off. Well, we yeah, had planned Thursday. on doing Thursdays and then Sundays with the whole group. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll, Thursday, we'll check in th- Thursday. JB Squared and also Thursday La Movida with La Movida. Uh, Victor Hugo Peña. Yep. Yeah. And next week I'll be actually, maybe we could, George, we should maybe, since I'm going to have to come to you, like I uh, mostly do, um, maybe we should do another update when I'm there in the Carolinas. Sure. And that'll be, that'll be a good fitness test for you too. Um, as we're heading into that Colorado time this summer, I'm I'm feeling, I'm I'm feeling much better, uh, but I'm not there yet. I, I, I watch the gram and I see, you know, the guy, I see what he's doing. By the way, his son, damn, is it, uh, uh, Enzo looks like he's about half the kid. What are you? What are you not feeding that guy and making him ride five hours a day? He, he's starting no, to look he's, like a, a world champ. Yeah, he's kind of just growing up, up and in. So yeah, he's uh, he's just growing up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> up and in, <laughs> up and in. That's what all of us want to be up and in. Let me tell you. <laughs> all right, y'all. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>